How difficult is it to make a competent 10-inch tablet that runs desktop applications? We are almost there with the Surface RT, well, maybe the Surface Pro, and then Microsoft had to go and make the Surface Pro big and unwieldy, and now we're finally getting back with the Surface Go line. When I reviewed the Surface Go 2 a couple years ago, I came away quite disappointed because the performance just wasn't there. It wasn't really made for me, it was an entry-level tablet, but I hoped that Microsoft would somehow return to the experience of using the Surface Pro or the Surface Pro 2. Maybe the Surface RT, but I was probably the only person that really liked that device in the first place. Enter the Surface Go 3, which aside from a small spec bump, doesn't really have too much different from the Surface Go 2. But after the last couple of months, can I say I finally found the spiritual successor to my Surface RT? Let's talk about it. This is NOISO, and this is the Surface Go 3 review. While the design of the Surface Go 3 is a couple of generations old now, I can't find it in my heart to dislike it. Yes, it doesn't take on the same design language that came with the Surface Pro X and the Pro 8, but it's still so cute. It's so adorable that it kind of looks like a Surface Pro 7 shrunk into a bite size. Now, obviously there's a practical benefit to this. Unlike most Surface Pros, this is substantially easier to hold in your hands and to use for long periods of time as a tablet. Over the years, I really found myself not using a Surface Pro as a tablet at all, and instead found myself in laptop mode more often. But with the Surface Go, I could finally truly go back to a true two-in-one experience. The downside of the older design is those larger bezels means that the footprint of this device isn't really that much smaller than the Surface Pro 8. There weren't many bags that I could find that only the Go 3 could fit into, whereas the Pro 8 could not. Which means that the actual small footprint doesn't really contribute to much. But if you were purely looking to find a good tablet experience, this is going to be a better one than the Surface Pro 8. The other feature in the Surface Pro 8 that we're missing in the Surface Go 3 is the upgradable storage, which comes as a real downside considering this only has 64 gigs of base storage. Now I already showed in my Surface Laptop Go review that upgrading from the 64 gig EMMC really, really bumps the performance up. And so I unfortunately am stuck with only 64 gigs permanently here. I really hope Microsoft starts to turn it around and offer upgradable storage on all of their models, and especially something as entry level as the Surface Go 3. Now, granted, I do have the 8 gig model in terms of RAM, so this is slightly upgraded and therefore a little bit more expensive. But it also still has the Pentium Gold processor that, while newer than the Surface Go 2, is still relatively low end. And that made me really worried when I first got this device. I was thinking that I'd have the exact same experience that I had with the Surface Go 2. And I was very, very wrong. In terms of performance, the Surface Go 3 is not fast by any means, but it is usable, which is a big improvement from my experience with the Surface Go 2. I could seriously open many, many different programs on this and not worry about them not running properly. Now, still, when I was opening various you know, Chrome applications or, or web applications in Chrome, it still kind of lagged behind most other tablets like iPads and Android tablets. But that was a small thing to give up when it came to running full desktop applications. At one point in time, I had Visual Studio Code open, OneNote, Excel, several, several tabs of Chrome, YouTube, and all of them ran relatively well. Now, obviously on the four gig model, you might not have quite as good of an experience. But the good news is, is the Pentium Gold processor in this is a significant step up from its former prior model. Now I did notice the performance was substantially stronger when it was plugged in, which was a little bit disappointing considering it does have Go in the name, and being plugged to a wall doesn't really strike me as Go. But other than that, if I wanted to use this as a desktop operating system on the Go, it is a better solution than I get on the iPad or any Android tablet. And it's probably better than most Chrome OS experiences as well, even if it is a little bit slower. If you keep this down to maybe three applications at a time, be it Microsoft Excel, PowerPoint, and Outlook, or maybe a coding IDE, Chrome, and YouTube, then you should be able to handle it just fine on this device. And the multitasking on, the, on Windows is still far ahead of any experience that I've had on iPad 
or Android. Now, the good news is the other upgrade that this has over other tablets is the key <laughs> the keyboard and trackpad. Now, these are by far my favorite keyboard and trackpad for such a small tablet that I've ever used. Now, granted, these are quite small. It is significantly more cramped than the experience that you get on the Surface Pro. And I did find myself kind of bumping up considering I have relatively larger hands. But even still, having a full layout for a keyboard is a great, great advantage over maybe a Magic Keyboard for the iPad Pro. I could do full Excel and full financial modeling without really slowing down substantially here. I could write a full script in Word or OneNote and not really slow down all that much from the experience of using a Surface Pro. Now, there are a couple keys that are missing, like the option or menu key, but those aren't really things that I think most people will miss. The trackpad is also just as good as any Surface Pro, even if it is a little bit smaller. And I still love the experience of how smooth and responsive it is better, again, than any other tablet that I've used. I can't help but address the elephant in the room though, which is Windows 11 on tablets, which despite how much investment Microsoft has put in, still feels worse or the same as Windows 10 on tablets was. Now, I still think that the experience of using iPad OS or Android OS on tablets is substantially better and more optimized. I still have a lot of issues with the experience on Windows 11, including the keyboard not popping up when I click into a text box, or different applications not scaling properly, or some applications just having way too large of elements that I can't even see the whole screen. And it doesn't help that a 10 inch tablet really wasn't made for a lot of Windows applications or the other way around. Now, granted, I was able to install many different applications on this and the Windows Store is getting better and will continue to get better with Android applications. But I can't guarantee you that you will be able to get this and enjoy your experience more so than you would with a $400 iPad. Even so, once I kind of got through all the frustrations that is Windows 11 on tablets, I really still enjoyed using this as a tablet. And that largely was contributed to the fact that it has a built-in kickstand, which I still think every single tablet should have. This is just a lot easier to watch YouTube or watch Netflix on than my iPad is, unless I have a bulky Magic Keyboard or case on my iPad for achieving the same thing. Now, granted, I would still prefer an iPad in many ways, but thankfully, Microsoft does offer a unique feature that the iPad doesn't. I came into this looking for a true spiritual successor to the Surface RT. And while I absolutely love the Surface Pro 8, it really does not scratch that itch. The Surface Go 3 absolutely does. I was absolutely just amazed with my experiences using the Surface Go 3. Yes, it wasn't perfect. Yes, the performance was missing a little bit. But the fact that I could basically take this, slide it into a small bag, walk around town and pull it out in the middle of a park or in the middle of a shopping center or at a coffee shop and still do desktop operating system style work was just so reassuring. Now, obviously that's the experience that you get with Surface Pro 8, but the experience that you don't get with Surface Pro 8 is a true tablet that you can use in one hand comfortably. And so that perfect intersection of tablet and laptop is what I was really looking for in a Surface Pro device, but I ended up getting it in a Surface Go device, which only leaves a recommendation. Do I think the Surface Go 3 is the right device for you? Well, obviously, if you are the type of person that already has a very, very capable laptop that is also thin and light, then the Surface Go won't really fill in a lot of gaps for you. If instead you might have a desktop that you love using, but you can't carry it around places, then the Surface Go 3 might be perfect for doing on-the-go work and then using your desktop for higher level, more difficult things. If you are a student, for example, and you are looking at for one device to do it all, I probably wouldn't recommend the Surface Go 3 unless you know you're sticking to applications like Excel, Word, PowerPoint, and OneNote. Even then, I would say you will benefit from a larger display. And while the Surface Go 3 can dock into larger displays, 
it just doesn't really have the horsepower to drive a lot of pixels and still kind of not crush under the pressure. Overall, I think Microsoft hit it out of the park with the Surface Go 3, and I can't wait to see what they have in store for the Surface Go 4 later this year or next year. With a couple of tweaks, this could become that tablet that I've always been dreaming of. Thank you for watching NOISO. I hope you like this review of the Surface Go 3. If you did, be sure to let me know down in the comments, check out my other Surface videos in my Surface playlist, and get subscribed for more videos just like this. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.